Hi, I'm Jessica from Jessica Wanders, and this is the final episode of How Much Food Can I Grow in My Backyard Garden this year. I'm going to total up everything that I grew in October, everything that I grew every other month, and we're gonna come up with a final tally number. If you're new here, I'll leave a link to the entire How Much Food Can I Grow playlist if you wanna watch it all from the beginning. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and you can subscribe to see more videos from me. First, let's see everything that I harvested out of the garden in October. thought I'd just do some filming in the front of the house, which you hardly ever see. But this is the crab apple tree in the front yard. It makes little tiny crab apples like this that I sometimes make jelly out of and then leave a whole bunch for the bird. I don't know what else you can make with crab apples besides jelly. But it looks like we have a pretty good crop. Today, I'm gonna to be taking out these drying beans. We're gonna hang them up. Most of them, lots of them are already dry, but some of them aren't. So we hang them up, make sure they're really dry. Loads of, these will be black beans. They look pretty small this year, actually. Our drying beans. This front part of the house gets the most sun. It's south, south facing and these beans just do really well all year. They don't really need much attention other than just watering them and they do they just kind of take over this whole space so these are our drying beans kidney beans cassolet white kidney beans black beans and uh, cranberry beans or taylor horticulture beans i think underneath here somewhere yeah this i planted some sweet potatoes under there maybe we'll dig and find some i'm not sure looks like the beans kind of over overgrew them Like that. There's loads of dried ones. I just make some piles and then I tie all the ends together later and hang them up. Making progress. So I just tie a string around each of these bundles and then we carry them up to the deck and hang them up. We grew potatoes in this bed last year and we did dig out some in the spring that were popping up, but here's one that survived. So we'll see if there's any potatoes in there, but I doubt it. I don't think we're gonna find any potatoes in here. I would be so amazed if there was potatoes growing underneath this, these beans. Oh, there's one. <laughs> these will be like russet, oh, russet potatoes. No, nothing else. Oh, two little tiny. Oh, there's one over there. Definitely, I can see it. Oh, some massive potatoes. We got a couple of potatoes out of our bean bed too then. These are our sweet potatoes, the vines. They didn't even flower, so I'm incredibly pessimistic that there are any like yams. We've got this one, there's one back in there, and there's another one over here. Oh yeah, there's this one. Is it broken? It broke. Oh. Oh, spiders. That's not bad. <laughs> that is not very many yams. Let's do the second plant. Plant number two. Jewel yam is what these are. Do you have anything in there? <laughs> Listen. Oh, uh, not. Oh, well. <laughs> They're tiny. <laughs> They're tiny. That's what we got for yams. Well, I'm gonna dice them up and cook them in something. And our last plant. This is the one. This is the one. Right. <laughs> no. Oh, not really, no. No. They kind of just grow on the roots, right? We've done better. Yeah, we've had way better years. I think they got overgrown out here with the beans. Gonna weigh up these tiny amount of yams. A tiny, tiny amount of yams or sweet potatoes. Um, we can talk about the differences. I think yams are actually a whole different type of thing that's grown in Africa. And all the things that I see uh, that I can grow are like versions of sweet potatoes. And I think that it depends on how they're cured. I'm not sure, but I prefer yams to sweet potatoes. And I grew one pound and six ounces of yams. So we'll call them yams. One pound, six ounces. We can have 
a debate about whether those are yams or sweet potatoes. Probably they're sweet potatoes. And just a couple of russet potatoes that decided to sprout up front. We've got six ounces from last year's potatoes. The first carrots out of the garden. Two pounds, six ounces for Thanksgiving dinner. Look at all these green chilies hanging up. Oh, these are paprika paprika peppers i was hoping that they would turn red if i hang them and they do look like they're kind of turning red so i'm super excited about that and then just our beans that were our drying beans the last few patty pans and one more small zucchini coming out of the garden one pound 12 ounces one pound one ounce look like a very good zucchini seven ounces but I'm shredding zucchini so he'll join the party well these are the melons that were left on the vines when we we're closing everything up these cantaloupes look like they are right ready and these larger watermelons look like they're probably ready too these can't these smaller ones I'm not sure I'll probably leave them to ripen. <laughs> These ones are hilarious. I mean, there might be some watermelon in there. So I'm not gonna weigh, I'm not gonna weigh this one. That's, I mean, it's just, let's, here, let's look. I mean, can you probably eat it? Probably, but is it actually a watermelon? Probably not. This is what it looks like. I took a little bite out of it. It's not horrible. I don't want to eat it. And, um, but could you? Probably, if you were starving. That's definitely an underripe cantaloupe. Not much to it. I'm not going to weigh this tiny thing. And what about this watermelon? <laughs> it's a tiny watermelon. Oh my gosh. It's like, a, it's like a miniature watermelon. Okay, I'll weigh that one and I'll scoop out the watermelon. Watermelons. I assume that because that one has red in it, these other little ones must be red inside too, but of course that's not always true. One pound, 13 ounces. One pound, 11 ounces. These little bits. I'm gonna put it in my fruit salad. Five ounces. That's the tiniest watermelon I've ever grown, plus five ounces. 11 ounces. Oh, I had to look up whether cantaloupes continue to ripen after you pick them, and it turns out that indeed they will, especially if you put them in with apples or something, something that is emitting like ethylene gas, and, uh, and you can't cut them and ripen them, like cut into the fruit, but even after they've been cut off the vine, they will continue to ripen. So I'm gonna try and let these these uh, slightly smaller ones ripen. I'm gonna put them in a bag with some of my apples and see if they turn into riper cantaloupes. So I'm gonna weigh them all. This one is definitely, definitely ripe. It's gonna go on my fruit salad. And that one is very ripe too, I think. One pound, six ounces. Little cantaloupes. One pound, 14 ounces. I think today I'll be bringing in and weighing all the apples. One pound, one ounce. This is just the beginning. This is one pound, one ounce. <laughs> I'm so surprised that it is the middle of October and I am still picking this small patch of raspberries from there to there and it there there's quite a few left still and it's so nice and warm and sunny today yeah it's really weird Some of them are quite a bit riper than I would want them to be. But if I, if 
find a squishy one, I just drop it. <laughs> and then they grow more raspberries. quite a few raspberries. I've got a zeroed scale. I'm going to dump them in here carefully so they don't make a mess everywhere. <laughs> oh, one escaped. Raspberries in October. One pound. Berries. One pound. I am going to save this bok choy seed. So I'm just going to clip off these seeds and I have lots of seeds for next year's bok choy. It was originally a sui choy, but they grow these nice bok choys every year. It's saving seeds. So there's all the seeds. I'll tie it up and hang it. We are going to go through the garden one last pass and find all of the ground cherries that look like they're big enough to sort of turn. They're all hiding. They all hide under here. So we're gonna gather up the ground cherries for one last, one last hoorah. See how many we end up with. They're quite big, but it is starting to frost, so they're coming out. These ground cherries are growing sort of everywhere in the garden, so we'll find them all. I'm gonna pull these drying beans out of this three by 11 foot garden bed. It's kind of intertwined with some more ground cherries so hopefully I can get it all separated but I want to keep them separate because I want to measure these drying beans uh, separate from the rest of them and I'm noticing a few more <laughs> just regular there's some Ferrari beans and there's some and there's some yellow beans actually that's crazy it's really late it's almost the end of October and my other beans sort of stopped producing so kind of a weird year Right, we're gonna pull all these out, these beans, drying beans, and some green beans. I'll just eat those for supper. The really dry ones are just dropping their beans. No escaping beans. This bean plant, look at how many of these beans are made for Ferrari beans. That's awesome. Really late. That's crazy. It's been a weird bean year. There's a ton on here. For supper, yummy. I'm out in this garden bed and these carrots are actually looking really, really huge. In this bed here and I honestly thought they weren't going to be that big because they were kind of overgrown by the zucchini. Let's see what we've got in here. Let's take a look at some of these carrots. I kind of only planted two types of carrots, chantonet and imperators. Oh my goodness. Ah, it's stubby. That's awesome. It's a very stubby carrot. These are cute little stubby carrots. This soil is so nice and light. These should come out pretty easy. Oh, they're coming out no problem. Look at that one. Crazy. These must have been the Chantonet carrots. Look at that, it's beautiful. These are nice. I've decided to try to grow cilantro in the house. So I've rescued some cilantro starts that were just in this garden bed. Um, and I'm gonna try to see if I can't grow cilantro in the house. I'm gonna weigh up all these ground cherries. I'm gonna spread them in this box in the sun and wait for them to sort of ripen as much as they can. Maybe we get some more ground cherries. Some of them are beautiful. 14 ounces. 14 ounces. I think there's still actually some more coming out. I need to figure out how many of these cranberry beans we got out of the, raised, the one raised garden bed. Long process. All right, I shelled all of those beans that came out of the three foot, 11 foot raised bed. All cranberry beans. Actually, I had some yellow beans, it dried up. So I've got these yellow wax bean seeds for next year, so that's excellent. Let's weigh up these cranberry beans. Hard 
hardly anything, three and a half ounces of dried beans. I have a couple of different bean types that are cranberry beans, but we're just gonna call them all cranberry beans. I got three and a half ounces of dry beans out of, I should say dry beans, out of the three by 11 foot raised beds. It's not much. Of course, beans dried weigh a lot less than they do when you cook them up. We got just some regular Ferrari beans and yellow snap beans. Last thing out of the garden for beans. It had a slow start, but it finished pretty strong. Seven ounces of wax beans. We'll call them wax beans. There, I'm not separating them. I think I did before yellow beans. These are yellow beans and those Ferrari beans. Found a couple of more plants of these ground cherries in the garden. What I did was I had these ones. Now I've zeroed the box with those in them. So we'll see how many more of these ground cherries we get. Not very many. Oh, some though, two, four, six ounces. Six ounces of ground cherries. And that's it. That's it? Is that it? That's it. I cleaned up all these carrots. Look how bright orange they are and wonderful. Scrub them right away if you wanna get them as clean as you can. Look at that one's a good one. Yummy. I think that the fluffy dirt grows really, really nice carrots that are not split, and not wonky and weird. I mean, that is a nice example of a Chantonay, Chardonnay, Chantonay carrot. That's perfectly straight. No breaks. Three pounds, two ounces. Out of the three by 11 foot raised bed. I feel like I'm not sure that that's what they're called, but I'll look it up. Ah, the beginnings of the carrot harvest. We have had such unseasonably warm weather here so it's like the middle of October almost and we still have peppers in the garden and we haven't had any cold temperatures but it's coming so we're gonna harvest everything all the peppers today look at these cherry bombs these peppers are beautiful it's been so warm it was like 27 degrees here yesterday those peppers, the Jimmy Dar Nardellas did do too well this year. Some of them are nice though. I've got some nice red peppers, some nice green peppers. Green peppers, there's tons over here. Some jalapenos looking really good. These banana peppers, nice looking banana peppers. We are gonna pull these out. Oh, look at the cayennes. Oh, yummy. Awesome, those look great. And these haven't quite turned yet. These chili darbles, but they will. More cayennes. Look at that one. Yay. That's the first time these poblanos have ever turned to red for me. We just had a long, extended fall season, which is good because it had a slow, wet spring start. We're gonna pull this entire bed of peppers today. Still not the best jalapeno year we've had, but ain't for nothing. Got some nice red ones in there. Zero the bowl. One pound, seven ounces of jalapenos. These are our cayennes this year. They all got red. Most of them got red on the vine this year, which is excellent. I'll leave them out uh, in a tray in the sun, the ones that aren't quite red yet, and they should change. But that's an excellent amount of cayenne peppers. I don't know. They don't they don't pour very well. <laughs> Jeez. Lovely. Nine ounces of cayenne peppers. These are our chili de arbol. 
I'm not quite sure how to say that. Because they're mostly green. I'm gonna leave them out in a warm, dry area and see if they turn red. Chili darbles. One pound exactly. One pound. A few Hungarian hot wax peppers. Seven ounces. It wasn't a great pepper year. These are all our just regular banana peppers. One pound, nine ounces. So I tried these Anaheim peppers this year. Um, I got my seeds from West Coast Seeds. And honestly, like this is the best one, but it has a lot of this happened. On a lot, there's another one, yeah, this happened on a lot of them. And I wasn't that impressed. They didn't grow, look, they didn't grow super great. That's what Anaheim peppers did in my life. I'll give them another chance because it wasn't a very good pepper year all around for any of our peppers. So maybe they'll do better a different year. 10 and a half ounces. These peppers are called Hungarian cheese blend and they make quite nice sized stuffing peppers. They're not quite as hot as red hot cherry bombs, um, but they're cute and nice. 13 ounces of Hungarian cheese blend peppers. Uh, this is one of uh, Mr. Warner's favorites. He likes to stuff them, but this year they didn't get very big at all. Red hot cherry bombs. One pound, five ounces. Because they're pretty small this year, they're probably going to get sliced up and added to the, the hot pickled peppers. They'll probably get added to the hot pickled pe pepper. <laughs> they have pickled peck of pickled peppers. Uh, the hot pickled pepper mix. Just like the Anaheims, the Nardello peppers didn't do very well. And they got a lot of these spots on them. Tons, tons. I don't know what it was with these two types of peppers because the other peppers seem to do okay. They all got spots like they were, like they're lacking calcium or some nutrient, but the other peppers in the same row did okay. So I'll test the soil next year maybe. I think it was maybe just a really hard year for them. 10 ounces. These are all the bell peppers that were left. We have been harvesting them and eating them and using them uh, throughout the season. But this is what was left when we pulled the plants before the frost. Let's weigh them up and see how many this is. Three pounds, 15 ounces. Bell peppers, three pounds, uh, 15 ounces plus. And the kind of more orangey ones that we're turning, one pound, eight ounces. One pound, eight ounces. My poblano peppers is something that they've never done before. They were not very prolific. They didn't make a ton of poblanos like they did last year. They made these little tiny ones. And then the only two that got big turned this color. It's not soft at all. It's still really hard. And I've never seen them this color before. Is this a thing that is okay? <laughs> so uh, I have these tiny ones. So it's not gonna be the same kind of poblano year that it was last year with a bunch to use up in the pantry challenge, that's for sure. Just wholly disappointed really in the poblano harvest. I was just starting to really get into recipes. Oh, why exactly one pound? One pound of poblanos. And last but not least for peppers, we have these habaneros. Two habanero plants is probably too many. Maybe one habanero plant next year. Here they are, habaneros. One pound, 13 ounces. I'm gonna pick some more broccoli. There's some nice heads. It's been bolting really fast because we have kind of a lot of really warm weather all of a sudden all the time. But I'm gonna get all these little heads, little heads of broccoli off of here. The honeybees are enjoying the broccoli flowers really late in the season.
And this is all the broccoli I picked. The last of the broccoli. I put my broccoli in the sink with a couple of kind of heaping capfuls of vinegar and all the bugs jump ship and die. There's another dude over here, jump ship and died. Yes. Get the bugs out of the broccoli. This is it for broccoli for this year. So we took down all of the broccoli plants because we need the garden to be done. More broccoli. That was a really good year for broccoli, actually. We didn't get the big heads at the beginning of the year that you can get sometimes. We don't normally because it gets too hot too fast. But uh, we did get lots of these little heads. So that's nice. It doesn't weigh very much. It's so anticlimactic. 13 and a half ounces. I'm going to take this curly parsley, the whole plant. Whole lot of parsley that I'm going to rinse and trim and then put in the dehydrator. Six and a half ounces. Today is going to be the day of carrots. We are going to take carrots out. Ha ha ha. In the front of this bed is these, oh, are these shorter, stubbier ones? Chantonee. Are they coming out easy? Yeah, watch. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, oh they're just... <laughs> <laughs> Those look beautiful. Thanks. Yeah, they're coming out pretty easy, eh? It's just unplugging. Perfect. Mm, right away, they smell like carrots. Oh. Gorgeous. Those are carrots just from like that. Yeah, from that one foot, that one foot area yeah. of of the bed, and you've got all this to pull. I don't know why this one decided to be all crazy rooty. That's weird. And then sometimes you get these carrots that they're intertwined with each other. What do you call those? They're cool. They're cool. Hehe. <laughs> Long skinny imperators back here start to get longer hopefully we'll see how many of these we get well those are mostly just small ones like from here mm. that way and from over there too yes those are straight definitely they're imperators but they're not doing as well not even halfway yet I'll have to check the chart, but I think that probably that next section was saved seeds because I've got yellow ones and straight ones. And also these ones are looking very rooty, but like a Nantes Coralis and then more yellow ones. So maybe I did a batch of my own saved seeds. <laughs> we'll see if they turn into imperators further along in the row. He says they're a mix of every kind of carrot that we've ever grown. That's what we got. <laughs> I must have put some saved seed in the middle, which is awesome. So we get some yellow carrots, some straight carrots, some fat carrots. We get a variety of carrots. Yum, yum. We're getting there. This is some carrots, man. That's a lot of carrots. So eventually, what happened to that one? <laughs> eventually, they stopped being yellow, and then they just started being... Straight imperators stopped being little fat ones and started being straight ones. And then look at this one. Aw, oh, it's, it's, it's a three lovey. Oh, that's one carrot. Oh, well, that's interesting. <laughs> look at that. That is an impressive imperator carrot. Look at that. Awesome. Well, these ones are good. Are they still coming out really easy? Yeah. Well, that's an okay amount of carrots, I'd say. Different kinds. I grew multicolored carrots one year, and now I have multicolored carrot seeds. And all these, wow, they're really perfectly straight. Most of them. That's a straight, that's the straightest harvest of Imperator carrots we've ever had, really. <laughs> ah, so many carrots. These are all of our bags of carrots. We've had bigger carrots previously, but I think this is a pretty good haul. I just about forgot to weigh the carrots. <laughs> I started processing them without weighing them. 
That is three ounces of carrots. This is the best way I could find to weigh the carrots <laughs> in this box. And I did zero it. Six pounds, two ounces. I think that these are the most beautifully straight carrots that we've ever had. Nine pounds, 12 ounces. Ooh. 10 pounds, eight ounces. This is a nice bag of those multicolored mixed, mixed carrots. Those are nice. Ten pounds, four ounces. We're gonna call those mixed carrots. Some really stubby, stubby, stubby ones. More like chansonese. This is a really heavy bag. Hey, we had to create another bag because these two bags are crazy way too heavy. Let it go. Oh, what's 11 pounds? 11 pounds of these chansonese carrots. 11 pounds. Another big bag of what these chansonese, the big bulky carrots. They're so cute. They're so cute. I'm pretty sure these are Chantonese. Right? That's what I keep calling them. Ten pounds, four ounces. And some more. Ounce, Eleven pounds, eight ounces. That's about 70 pounds. 70 pounds of carrots, I think. I haven't added it up yet, but about that much. We've had bigger years. But all those carrots look really very nice. It didn't do that well, but on this trellis here, we've got lots of beans that are drying and I'm just gonna clip them off. Drying pole beans. And we're weighing all the apples from the, our apple trees. Nine pounds, nine ounces. Here's some more apples. That's a funny looking apple. It's fine. Whoa, that is 10 pounds, 13 ounces. More apples, it's 10 pounds, six ounces. More apples. 10 pounds, 12 ounces. It is seven pounds, six ounces. I suspect that Mr. Warners has been grabbing apples and taking them to work and eating them. Just saying, but it probably wasn't very many. Two more apples. Oh, exactly five pounds. Last bag of apples. Eight pounds, 14 ounces. All right, I'm gonna check out these massive, massive leeks. They're huge. Holy moly, loud birds are also really, really hard to get out. Seems like the ground is really solid around them. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be a workout to get them out of here for sure. They're really, really in there. Crazy huge leaks. <laughs> Look how huge it is. Oh, it's so big. Amazing leaks we have this year. I don't know what happened. I get it as much as I can, and then I just kind of try to cut the root down there so that it comes out. And it's still not coming out. <laughs> still nothing. Honestly, these are the base we have absolutely ever grown. I can't even show you a good picture of how the size of these. What are they? They are rammy, rammy leeks. 
Okay, I thought it would just be a little easier if I cut all the leaves off before I dig them out because they're kind of in the way. More leaks. All right, I've cut all of the ends off of them. So those are all of my leeks. There are some really, really big ones. Let's go weigh them. Keeping in mind that all these leeks grew in this very small area to there. Those are the green onions. <laughs> these grew here. It's not a big area. Here's my feet. It's not a very big area. I wasn't sure how to weigh them, but I've got this tray <laughs> from my dehydrator and I think that I can lay these on top like this and they won't fall off. That's my theory. That's what I'm going to try. <laughs> that is six pounds, six ounces. That is four pounds, eight ounces. All right, last leeks, four pounds, 10 ounces. This is a fair amount of leeks. Just because it's fun to do sometimes, I wanted to know how much those leeks would cost me if I went and bought them at Save-On or ordered them for delivery from Save-On. I just used an online conversion app thing and entered 15 pounds, eight ounces. That's the total of these leeks. 15 pounds, eight ounces equals 7,030 grams because the price at Save-On only gives it to me in price per 100 grams. And the price at Save-On is 88 cents, 88 cents per 100 grams which i think gives me a grand total of 61 dollars and 87 cents if i wanted to go buy 15 pounds of leeks i'm going to dehydrate them freeze them and i'm going to make some potato leek soup probably <laughs> i'll tell you what that is per pound one pound is 454 grams 3.99 a pound so they're 3.99 Three ninety nine a pound right now, sixty one eighty five. Pretty close. Sixty two dollars approximately for fifteen pounds, fifteen and a half pounds of leeks. It is very windy today, and we're supposed to get some really cold, snowy weather. So I'm gonna take out these beet greens. Look pretty good, better than the spring ones. And there might be some little small beets in there. So I'm going to pull out all these beet greens, get rid of the bad leaves, and we're going to weigh up beet greens. Yummy. So it's a pretty good haul of fall beets and some nice looking beet greens. I did zero this weigh scale before I filled up the bowl. Yeah, three pounds three ounces of some a little tiny beets, but mostly just beet greens. One and a half ounces of raspberries. The last raspberries. <laughs> one more hidden ground cherry plant, like one ounce, one ounce. I harvested all this oregano before we put the plant away for the winter. Maybe two ounces of oregano. I have loads of shallots out of the three by 11 foot bed. They've been in there for two years. They're not very big. Some of them I'll plant next year. Let's weigh up the shallots. Uh, 14 ounces of shallots. And we have a grapevine. It's poorly tended, but I did get some grapes from the grapevine. Two pounds, exactly two pounds. A few more shouts. Lovely. Two, four, six ounces of shallots. Here is some last minute 
bunches of kale from the garden before it snows. <laughs> it won't be very much, but everything counts. Hey, eight, ten ounces of kale. We're bringing in the last green onions from the garden too today. Five pounds, six ounces. Four pounds, one ounce. It's taken a while, but I have shelled all of the dry, drying beans that we grew this year. We've got some really cool calypso beans, lots of um, cranberry beans, some that I'm not really sure about. Loads and loads and loads of black beans, quite a few kidney beans. These ones are just separate because they should really dry a little bit more before I put them with the other ones. Got these are just the seeds of Gold Marie vining, and these were some vining vining borlotti beans. These are the seeds of just uh, green vining beans that we didn't get picked, and they turned to seeds. So I'll take some out for seed for next year, but then we'll just throw them in soups or whatever. Here's some cassoulet. I'm pretty pleased with this year's harvest of drying beans. We're gonna weigh them up. First, we're gonna start with these Taylor horticulture that came out of the three by 11 foot raised beds. 2.4 ounces. It did okay, there was already three and a half ounces. Now there's 2.4 ounces. They were Taylor horticulture cranberry beans out of there. These Taylor horticulture cranberry beans are always a pretty good producer. One pound, seven ounces. I love these calypso beans. I'm so glad that they turned out this year. They look super cool. And I've tried to grow them before without much success, so I'm super happy. 2.9 ounces of calypso beans. 2.9 ounces. I'm pretty excited with the black bean harvest this year. We did pretty well. Oh, one escaped. Escape. Black beans. Black turtle beans is what they're called. One pound, 11 and a half, 11 and a half ounces. What I keep saving my peanut butter jars for. They're great for storing beans. Oh. Too many. These castle beans. I've heard people call them white kidney beans. 12.6 ounces. These look like kind of a mix of some Taylor horticulture beans and some Borlotti bush beans that grew in the main part of the garden. I don't know. Some of them look like they have, they're grayer or blacker or more purple. I'm not sure. So they didn't quite look like Taylor horticulture, which are brown. And most of these dark, dark ones are Borlotti bush beans. 1.3 ounces. Then we have quite a few kidney beans. One pound, 6.4 ounces. One pound, 6.4 ounces. And then we just have these ones that are still drying. 5.1 ounces. It's a little bit unfair because when they dry, they're gonna be a little bit lighter, but I really want to get this, really want to get these entered in. Vining Borlotti beans. Vining. 2.8 ounces. These are the Gold Marie Vining. You can eat them as fresh, uh, but we didn't, and they dried really fast on the vine, so I'll use the beans for something. 4.2 ounces. Some Kentucky Wonder pole beans that went to seed really, really fast. So I'll just throw these in some soup or something. Kentucky Wonder pole beans. 
seeds, green bean seeds, basically 0.8 ounces, not even an ounce. How rude. There's our beans. That is the last thing from the garden. I am going to tally up October and then I'm going to tally up the entire October, September, August, June, July amounts and we're going to do totals. Okay, I kind of consolidated all the numbers <laughs> so it's easier to read. I got uh, just one pound of yams, a couple more. They found some russet potatoes hidden in the beans in the front, a pound of raspberries, a couple pounds of patty pens, very small zucchini, four pounds of watermelon, three pounds of cantaloupes, carrots. 72 pounds of carrots overall, 79 pounds of apples, 15 pounds of leeks, some beet greens, some little bit of oregano and spices, kale, a little bit of kale left over, nine pounds of green onions. These dry beans all totaled was five pounds, 15.1, almost six pounds of dry beans, which is actually pretty good because they don't weigh very much. <laughs> So that gives a total for October at 223 pounds, 6.1 ounces, which isn't too, too bad. Drum rolls and stuff will add up every month. So October was 223 pounds, 223 pounds. September was 523 pounds. August was 76. Six pounds. July was 96 pounds. I think July was a total, like it added some more and then combined those as well. And after I add up all the little ounces, 8.7 ounces, three ounces, uh, I'll just do that quickly. And we end up with 919 pounds of 15 ounces. So we're just going to call it, we're just going to call it uh, 920 pounds. Pew, 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 pew for the year. 920 pounds of produce out of my garden, out of my backyard garden. So honestly, it was a pretty disappointing year in the garden. <laughs> That's not the the biggest year that we've had. And in fact, every year we keep track of how much we grow in the garden and it's been steadily going down for the past four or five years. I think 2018 was a pretty big year. We had 1200 pounds come out of the garden, uh, but that's including all the fruit trees. So we had the plum tree died this year and then the cherry tree didn't really produce either. So that's quite a bit of weight that was missing. I'm hoping that the new fruit trees that I planted, I planted a peach tree and a pear tree, and I'm hoping that um, we can grow another uh, plum tree from one of the sprouts coming up from the plum tree. So hopefully that'll get replaced over the next, you know, five or six years. But, um, but yeah, so it wasn't the best year. I was aiming for a thousand pounds of produce and I didn't really make that at 919 pounds and 15 ounces by the end of October. We got really early snow. It, it's a, uh, I could have got some more kale. It killed my second crop of peas, which it doesn't normally snow this early. We usually can get no snow right up until the middle of December. So I was hopeful. Overall though, we got 82 pounds out of this three by 11 foot raised bed, which is pretty, pretty decent. And then this grow bag uh, grew four pounds. Yeah, I'm not gonna use a grow bag again. Just for us here, the climate is so dry and hot, it was really hard to keep it watered. Yeah, I think I just had some poor soil in it as well. Maybe I will, maybe I will try it again. But I like this, knowing how much I can grow in one of our beds because they're all pretty much the same size, so that's fun. And I enjoyed growing a variety of different things. Kind of gives you a selection of things in each bed, which is fun. 920 pounds, basically. I think I had a few people guess to see how much I was going to be able to grow by the end of the season. Let's have a look and see who was closest. 
So it looks like of the people that guessed, the absolutely closest person, there were some people 120 pounds away, some people 45 pounds away, some people 66 pounds away, but the closest person was 12 pounds away, and it was Codependent K, guessed 932 pounds coming out of the garden this year. And even though I'm disappointed, that is awesome. Congratulations, Codependent K, for getting the closest guest. That's that is a uh, pessimistic but accurate <laughs> so that bang on almost bang on uh, yay code of pen and k hopefully i have some fireworks and stuff going on <laughs> thank you guys all for watching this very long how much food can i grow series where i wanted to total up and see how much food i could grow in my backyard garden and in a three by 11 foot raised bed and then this a sad grow bag which didn't really which I didn't pay much attention to but it was a super super duper fun challenge it was a super fun challenge that I may or may not do next year because <laughs> it's a lot of work and uh takes a lot of time so yeah it really wore me out just all the editing was crazy especially into September when harvest time really ramped up but and October too so it was a lot it was a lot and we have a lot of food in the house. I'm thinking that, you know, really, we haven't bought groceries. I'm not behind on my grocery hauls at all. We just haven't bought any groceries because we have so much food that came in from the garden, which is super excellent. I think in my grocery haul, when I when I total up how much uh, money I spend on food, I will include the amount of money that I needed to to put towards growing the garden because, of course, that is money towards food as well. So that'll go in the grand total of how much... Um, money I spent all year in my grocery haul videos. So that's it for how much food can I grow this year. I th I th thanks so much for watching you guys. It was fun. I had a lot of fun. So 920 pounds of groceries out of the garden uh, in my backyard kind of suburban garden. It's really, it's kind of impressive. I enjoy it. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you all. Don't forget to give it a like, subscribe. I'll post some videos to the entire How Much Food Can I Grow playlist as well as anything else that you might be interested in. And I will see you next time.